doing some film treatments on Harbinger and Bloodshot, and um, I'm not sure how much you can divulge into that, but obviously that influenced what your new project's going to be for, for Valiant, which is Secret Weapon. So talk a little bit about some of those projects you have going for the, the company. Uh, I first came on board to do a feature film adaptation of Harbinger, and, um, um, and I did a lot of work on that for them. Um, and that sort of got my foot in the door to do some revisions on Bloodshot. Uh, another writer named Jeff Wadlow had done a draft before me, um, and, uh, and I was eager to try and stay in the Valiant camp as much as possible, so I sort of sweet-talked my way into that title as well. Uh, but when I was working on Harbinger, I had so many ideas uh, for Livewire, for Amanda in particular. Like, I, I really fell in love with her as a character. But it's first and foremost Pete Stanchek's film, you know, and the Renegades, the, the, that little group of kids. So uh, I didn't have nearly enough room to, to work on Livewire. And eventually I went and I said, I should just do a book for you guys. And they were like, oh, okay, challenge accepted. <laughs> and here we are, so this is like a preview and we're here at the convention. And maybe talk about a little bit about what, what Livewire is doing. Yeah, um, you know, I had been fascinated by the fact that Livewire has such a, a solid moral compass to her, you know, that her mentor, who was really the one who taught her all these values and, and discipline, uh, ends up uh, taking a really dark path. And, and she doesn't follow him, you know, she stays true to what she knows is right. Uh, and in his absence, discovers uh, an entire part of his business that she had no idea existed, which is uh, all the psyots that he activated with his surgical procedure, which is a very expensive thing. You know, sometimes we have seen in the comics that sometimes that kills people, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it turns into these awesome superheroes that join his egg breakers, you know, his sort of like personal Avengers team. Right. And then you have. Um, this gap that I wanted to fill, which is what if he, he had uh, activated Psyots and he didn't like what they had, you know? After you're being told repeatedly, you are special, you're gifted, and I'm gonna invest a lot of money in you to activate whatever this latent power is, and then be told, you're worthless, you're useless to me, I'm gonna discard you. I wanted to focus on the heroes that were kind of the island of misfit toys mm -hmm. in his world and for, for Livewire to, to seek them out and try and undo the damage that, has, that Harada has done to them, just emotionally. So, while I got you here, I, I can't help but, but ask some arrival questions. Um, Lay it on me. Uh, first, congrats on uh, all the success that you've had. Thank you. Um, it's, it's marvelous, uh, smart science fiction, you know, obviously it's been batted around a lot. But there's so much stuff that we never got to see, and something that maybe that you can share with us is some of the stories that didn't make it to the screen where the different approaches different countries took to try and communicate with the heptapods. Yeah, there was certainly a lot of uh, extra footage, some of which we even shot, you know, and some of it was just in the script. In the uh, Hokkaido site, they brought in uh, a quartet of cellists and they tried performing music as a way of communication. Um, they had, we've had, uh, we had fine art painters to come in um, and see if uh, like art had, was a form of communicating. There were some cartographers. I think that was in uh, one of the English sites. And, and the thought behind some of those approaches were? Um, it, it was really just trying to find a common ground mm -hmm. that we could with this, you know, that, to see what resonated with the heptapods. And, um, and, and therefore, plenty of times, the various sites would try um, unorthodox approaches. The Peruvian site uh, brought in someone that was fluent in sign language to see if maybe gestures would do something. And was there anything that, that you could maybe share with us that what, did anything kind of trigger a response from in, in the other countries? Uh, the, you know, it didn't, it didn't last, but for many drafts in this script, uh, the heptapods at this Peruvian site uh, said back in sign language uh, bring us Louise, 